Welcome to the URI Feinstein Providence Campus, the Urban Arts and Culture Programs Gallery in the first and second floor lobby of the Shepherd Building at 80 Washington Street. We have a new exhibit, a one-person show called Visions of Flora and related works from 1996 to the present by Madeline Maxey and it's up through the 31st of March. There are tours from 255 Westminster Street uh, at 3, 3.30, 4, and 4.30 on Thursday and Friday, and then also um, on Gallery Night, which is the 18th of March from 5 to 9. I'll remind you of that at the end of this. Um, I have Frank Toady here who teaches art history at Johnson & Wales, and he's going to share in this um, walkthrough of Madeline's exhibit. So, Frank. Hi, Stephen. Well, it's nice to be here with you today. So, one of the things I'd like to say first to whoever is watching is uh, if you're looking for an exhibit that is um, exciting and exhilarating and uh, uh, stimulating in, in the very best sense, then this is the exhibit for you. Madeline has, has shared with us an amazing body of work that is so vibrant and filled with color. Uh, here is the first piece in the exhibit, which is sort of an outdoor patio piece. And what's wonderful about Madeline's work is that it's very, um, it's both grounded in her own uh, aesthetic, if you will, but that also has tremendous echoes, if you will, to earlier movements. And so here you see the beginnings of there's a, a, right, a, a, an homage to the collage here, right, in terms of how the piece itself is assembled and the different mixed media in this piece, right, not only the outdoor images, but then we see this sort of applied fabric here, right, that has, right, um, Asian characters, most likely Japanese, but I'm not sure. But, and, right, some other pieces that are also applied. So again, you know, collages began at the turn of the 20th century, Right with George Brock and Pablo Picasso, and here in that piece, Madeline right, adapts it to her own aesthetic. Madeline identifies herself as a colorist, and we can certainly see that in this wonderful uh, image of a, a seascape with sort of it looks like a Hawaiian lei, and then these wonderful um, shells, and then sort of mountains in the distance. Here we have a beautiful, this is probably one of my favorite, if not my most favorite piece in the entire um, exhibit, this stunning, uh, it's about Waikiki, right, this uh, outrigger canoe, sorry for the pause there, but I was sort of, uh, it's hard to put into words the, the vibrancy of the color, the use of space, the, uh, just the light. I mean, one of the wonderful things that Marilyn does, and we'll see it later in the other pieces, is that she foregrounds her, well, excuse me, her work with these very powerful objects, whether it's a vase, or in this case, a, a flower or a tree, that really invites us immediately into the image. We're not passive, we're actually actively engaged with the art. And here, this beautiful use of color and shape and form and again, it has echoes. Um, some of the work that we'll see has echoes to earlier modernists, Van Gogh, Matisse, and in this case, right, um, Paul Gauguin, who loved um, the South Pacific. And so, right here we see uh, echoes of that. I, I, I don't know if Madeline would think of it as an homage, but certainly for me, I, I see that. Again, here's another wonderful sort of uh, collage effect with the octopus, so there's sort of this wonderful whimsy as well, um, coupled with, again, more of the sort of Asian characters, sort of the uh, Asian pagoda entrance. Um, again, just really vibrant and exhilarating. Uh, we have the first of what will be many uh, still lifes there. Um, here's another still life. Right, so one of the things that Madeline likes to explore, and clearly as you can see, right, is this flattening of space, right, which brings the objects closer to us, gives us a great deal of immediacy. Here's another um, still life. 
And here is uh, another one of her favorite images, right, is the, the teapot. Um, we'll see some other things. Um, this one here is a, a wonderful homage to right, Van Gogh, right, with the sunflowers. And again, Van Gogh and all of his sunflowers, right, has that flattened um, background, right, that almost just pushes everything forward. Here we have this wonderful, again, here's this explosion of color. And what Madeline does with her color is that it's, it's predominantly, and she may disagree, I would say that it's, uh, again, she calls herself colors and the, in the, in the, the, the images are filled with color. She t um, my observation is she tends to use color, at least in these, in a more natural way. And what I mean by that is, if this were Matisse, you know, the, the greens of the flower might have been uh, purple. Or all of it might have been red. And so um, Madeline works from, if you will, a, a naturalist space, but then, right, still throws in some things that are unique, sort of like whether this is a path or a river that's in purple, right? So she is has echoes of using sort of non-natural color, if you will, in sort of depicting natural scenes. But again, the, the, the strength of the, these flowers that come literally right out at us. Again, same here. Again, just beautiful, the, the shapes, right? We actually see the texture of the landscape. We can actually feel the landscape. And I don't mean necessarily in an emotional sense, though we do feel emotions with the use of color, but that we could almost reach in it and feel the roughness or the softness of the objects that are in here. Here again, the, the next series is, is part of a, a series of, uh, based on her uh, visit to Japan. Here we have a very famous image uh, from a Japanese woodblock, right? The, um, the waves off of Kanagara. And I have forgotten who the artist is, but uh, everyone will probably be familiar, very familiar with the wave. Um, so again, really beautifully done. And then this wonderful repetition of sort of the scales of the fish. Both here we have the fish sort of kite, right? And then in terms of the, the fabrics that are lying underneath, if you will, sort of echo that here and the teal and then this lovely sort of purple blue. Um, really, really stunning. And then she takes her still lifes and adds a little whimsy uh, with this piece here. She calls it Blue Spring. And then the one that's really sort of, um, you know, sort of a response to what we're all experiencing now, sort of this bouquet of right face masks. And Right, she's taken the COVID vaccine, right, and has changed its color to, to try to dispel, if you will, its um, hold on us, if you will. Now we're entering into a section that very much is reflective of, again, <clears throat> uh, her travels uh, to Japan. And again, you can see what I was referencing in terms of this foregrounding. In this particular piece, we actually can see echoes of Japanese woodblock art, where the artists framed the initial image as at the foreground with these very almost um, larger than life, right? Um, in this case, right, we've got these sort of bamboo shoots and flowers that give a very strong grounding, and then that allows us then to have this wonderful sense of perspective. Uh, and here we have this wonderful footbridge crossing over to what looks like a, a town on the other side. Um, and then sort of a little lamps lighting their way to maybe a tea ceremony or a pagoda. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So again, it's, um, it's hard not to feel joy and excitement looking at her work. Here, a little bit, I, I'm not sure, she has a number of, of planes, it's called Birds of Coronado, right? So actually Coronado being um, the base down uh, at, uh, in San Diego, which is, so she's playing with the Birds of Paradise of Coronado as well as the Birds of Coronado because there is a 
major military installation there. And then we know that she's referencing that as well because we have, right, tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. In this case, it's not an oak tree, it's like some type of palm. Um, so again, there's always this, this wonderful sense of whimsy um, that you find in, in Madeline's work, which just is kind of this, you know, really charming. And here we have uh, a series again of interiors. Again, this lovely work, uh, this sort of, it's, not, it's a uh, three stands, right? So we have this wonderful, actually really nice tiered effect. So this wonderful use of right, balance and harmony and perspective, balanced by the colors, the pots, right? And again, this sort of very foreshortened background and again, bringing everything close to us. And here is a wonderful piece. It's titled A Biography of a Table. So it's actually a diptych, which means that it's one painting, if you will, cut into two, or two paintings that are put together. You can actually see the center line here, right? And then uh, there's another type called a triptych, which would be three panels, right, put together. But here we have a diptych, and it's this wonderful table, right, with this beautiful uh, either a series of runners or tablecloth, and it has a lot of her favorite images. If you go to Madeline's website, you'll see that she loves, again, teapots. This is actually a bracelet that finds its way into a number of her pieces. Um, garlic, um, different shells, right, of different types. And so she's woven, what came to mind was that song from The Sound of Music. These are a few of my favorite things, right? So she's put them all together here, and it's just, it's lovely. I mean, I would love to sit down and have tea with her, right, wouldn't you? Uh, again, here's this wonderful, um, the, the chrysanthemums, right, so again, an, an echo um, to sort of Japanese culture, right, the chrysanthemum throne. Um, and then we have, right, this wonderful gourd, so again, this indication that it's, right, for fall. And then we have this wonderful sort of rite of spring here with the, the pussy willows, this um, beautiful, Again, the dominance of the vase and the pussy blows, right? In the background, that's basically there to support um, what we're seeing. But, uh, and the pussy willows almost looking both like snowflakes and golden sparkling rays of the sun, right? Because we have like, these wonderful splotches there of, of color. So, and then we have another one that's. Um, more gentle, if you will, right? Because the, with this sort of the, the pale green and the, the lovely orange, so these complementary colors. And then, again, the, this explosion of sort of pussy willows. As we move up the stairs, um, Stephen's gonna bring us to what are known as cartoons. Now, not cartoons like Ben and Jerry, but the fact that these are generally, cartoons are um, usually done in pen or maybe ink, pencil, charcoal, and they're usually a study for, right, a piece of a larger painting. So we can actually see the birds of paradise that we saw in the birds of Coronado were there. And then also the trees that were in um, a number of the pieces, right, that were influenced by her trip to Japan. So again, it's a way for an artist to work out any challenges in terms of trying to capture the image or getting the right proportion. A lovely landscape here, right, with two, I don't know, dogs. Morning doves. Yeah, really, really lovely. And so we have this beautiful sense of serenity that runs through the whole painting, through the center of the painting, reflected in the flower and then in the rocks, this sort of beautiful blue and purple and, and yellow, and we see it reflected in the, in the morning doves. And so while there's a sense of movement, there's also this sense of peace. Uh, this lovely sort of mountain scene here um, from California. Uh, I was saying to Stephen earlier, it has sort of echoes of Kandinsky. Um, also a little bit of sort of Georgia O'Keeffe, right, with the shape, right, that the mountains themselves are almost like a flower that's sort of exploding. So really, really lovely. And then we have um, a number of monotypes that are coming up. Um, so monotype is a, um, a form of print 
right? And there's only one. Again, another. I mean, each one of these you could spend minutes and minutes and minutes looking at and taking your time and looking at the repeating patterns of flowers that are reflected in the tabletop, right, or in the fabric, and then we see the echoes, right, in the, the vase itself. So these are more, um, those are more prints. Again, here, these are um, drawings. And again, we can see that uh, these are somewhat reflective of, again, the uh, work, that, the much larger work that we saw earlier, right, sort of the, the bamboo. And now we're coming up on a series of four panels that are based on a trip to Devon, England, uh, Madeline's husband is from that part of England. And here we see a very different, right, color choice. Uh, much more uh, subdued, if you will, um, sort of certainly darker choices. Right, and her, her shapes in this first one with the tree branches, right, has almost an eerie feel to it. And here, the second one is now is called the Three Sisters. So we're we're getting a little bit of an echo of right the Scottish play by Shakespeare, right? The Three Weird Sisters. Um, and then right this much deeper, darker sort of purple, right and black with sort of this flower headstone, and then there's almost sort of like a beginnings of a Celtic frost here, right? So very, very powerful and beautiful. And there's still right with the flowers and the sense of movement. Uh, here we have this lovely, lovely cityscape that definitely feels very much like um, uh, a reminiscence of Van Gogh. We've got this wonderful circularity here with the sun and this wonderful sort of almost flames in terms of these trees, right? This very vertical line that we actually see in right starry night and we almost get a sense of movement in terms of right all of the, the the sky here right and we see there's lots of wonderful brush strokes so the the paint painting itself has wonderful textures not just the image we can actually feel the heat and as we can here and these other pieces that are from um i believe they're from Mexico. Uh, again, a complete change in landscape, change in color. And then lastly, we're coming to, right, uh, just an amazing set of images. Again, here, these are very large images. Um, they're probably, you know, three feet by two feet or four no. feet by three feet. <clears throat> yes. Um, so, so Madeline really loves working with big canvases, and she fills them. I mean, it, 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 the, the energy of her work just literally goes off um, the canvas. And again, you can see in all of these, this again, the wonderful, strong, bold choice of the major elements close to us that it then just bring us right into right the image, and we get this sort of, um, this multiple levels that we're both looking down and looking in at the same time, right? So here we get a sense that we're looking straight on, but then as we move to other elements, it looks like we're looking down. So this wonderful, right, juxtaposition. Uh, this one here is just really, I love the red wood, right, with the, I don't know if it's a bench or just a bridge. piece of driftwood. Oh, it's a bridge, uh, but it's just, it's beautiful. You know, and then the, and the pots and this sort of like little stream, just, and then this wonderful seascape. So I'd like to thank you for coming on our little virtual tour. Please uh, do come and see the exhibit. It's up through the 31st of March. And on when, uh, I'm sorry, on Thursdays and Fridays at 3, 3.30, 4, and 4.30, I'm able to give tours from 255 Westminster Street entrance into the gallery. And then also on gallery night uh, from 5 to 9. That's on Thursday, the third Thursday 
uh, March 18th. So please come along and see this wonderful work by Madeline Maxey. It is absolutely stunning. It's the best way to make your way into spring. And thank you very much, Frank, for sharing your knowledge and your excitement about the work. Absolutely. My pleasure. Have a great day. Thank you.